Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Value Working Group on July 28th. I am standing in a place of Vinod, who usually does these. Um, so I don't know if I can live up to his high standards, but I will try. I will do my best. Uh, I also need to uh, uh, enable. Did we already have transcriptions? Enable? Yeah, okay. we're going transcriptions. It's just hidden on mine. Okay, sorry. Here we go. All right. Minutes <clears throat> are in the chat. I will share my screen. I have no clue. Do you want me What's... to run it, Elizabeth? I mean, you I'm... mentioned a yeah, few Matt times. Yeah, both here. <laughs> I will go to the bullets and then I will just defer everything to you, Matt. So I can tell Vinod that, yes, I actually facilitated, but you know, you actually did all the work, so. <laughs> okay, Fair. so last time we did revisions of old metrics uh, and Vinod was gonna look at this. Matt G was gonna look at the organizational influence that's right. It doesn't exist, so I didn't do it. Oh, okay. I'm going to change it to organizational. Uh, no, I can do it. So, okay. So, um, first, Tony, it's nice to meet you. I, you're oh, new. Hi, Tony. To the, to, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so, my name is Tony McDowell. I am um, currently at Rapid Silicon, and I'll talk a little bit about us and why. Well, we're here in a moment, but I have a long history. I used to be at Xilinx uh, and I was an embedded and FPGA focused person there uh, focused on open source. Um, that's actually what brought me over to uh, Rapid Silicon. And so at Rapid Silicon, we are a, a silicon vendor startup um, doing mid-range FPGAs. But our key thing that we're trying to focus on is open source end to end, and including our tape out, like we're using open source tools for our tape out and then extending that all the way through our FPGA EDA flow and into our embedded software stack. So open source is a key part of our cultural um, DNA. And when I was brought on board, I, um, I knew about the concept of um, OSBOs and um, how they can be harnessed to help an organization. Traditionally, that's like a more software focus, but my role is to literally build an OSBO from scratch that uh, encompasses the entire company, not just software folks. So um, I, I met a couple of you probably in passing um, at OSS last month. Um, and so um, this is my first attendance at this meeting. I want to make this a regular habit, but I am a blank slate. Like I know the concept of all of this, but I've never done it in practice. And I have a particular bent towards how to not just like graft an Osbo onto an existing organization, but really bake it into the entire corporate worldview, including all the way to the CEO. Like I have the CEO body in on this and he's expecting good um, metrics around this. So um, that's kind of what brings me here. Right on. It's uh, nice to have you here. A few comments. Are you familiar with the to-do group as well? I am and I'm on the okay. Slack there. Um, okay. And um, Right now, honestly, like from learning there and a little bit here, um, I'm trying to figure out what we need to track as an OSBO in our particular situation and, and how okay. we need to add value to the company right now. Okay, gotcha. Just wanted to make sure that was on yep, your radar. That, that's, well. that is definitely on my radar. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sure. Cool. <clears throat> um, so, so, Tony, just to kind of give you some some general overview. I don't know how much you know about the chaos project, but we do kind of a variety of different things um, with the kind of the core residing at the development of metrics, the development of tooling, software tooling. So Augur is one of the, the tools and Sean is the lead developer on Augur who's on this call right here. And then Grimoire Lab is the other uh, tool that we use. And I don't know if you're familiar with the company Batergia. No, I'm not. Okay, so Batergia is a, a, a for-profit company, um, and Grimoire Lab is the open source version of their sold tool. Okay. So, so Grimoire Lab is one tool that helps you kind of build dashboards uh, to get a better understanding of the things you're talking okay. about, and Augur is also another tool that does. Yeah, I, I was sat in some of the presentations on it. Basically, at OSS last month, I if if I I had some other sessions I had to go to, but I basically tracked OsboCon the entire week, right? Okay. And and so I, I've gotten a lot of exposure to this, and I know you guys have an agenda, but if there, like I've been trying to ask on Slack, but I I have some general questions that I think would be better, like 
person to person, like just in a informal, like conversational setting. Yeah. So if we have time at the end of the agenda, if, if I could just ask some questions of the group, um, yeah. that would be appreciated. Yeah, no, that's, that's not a problem. Um, okay. Yeah, no, that sounds great. So, and I think we have a fairly light agenda today. So part of, and I'll kind of, we can now take a look at the revision of the old metric. So basically one of the things that, that we do, Tony, and I'll kind of describe this for you too as well, Tony, but like we have about 70 metrics that are released at the moment. And um, part of that release process is we need to review the metrics just because some of them are in old templates. You know what I mean? Like templates that were developed, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago. Um, sometimes you were, we revisit the markdown of the metric and just the text doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> we, when we wrote it at the time, it was pretty clear, but two years later it, it has changed. So this during the six month period right now, we are really not looking at releasing new metrics, but just revising and kind of signing off on the metrics that we have. So the metrics, sorry, that's dog. I, I'm getting pretty good at, <laughs> at muting <laughs> when I need to. <laughs> um, and so right now, could you, did you pull up that one? the labor investment. So I think Vinod was going to start taking a look at this. Also, maybe it, what we've been finding, Elizabeth, in terms of the revision of the metrics is, could you pull up the spreadsheet? Yeah, that's the way to get there. And so, Tony, we have, this is, this is just our kind of our workflow tracking spreadsheet for all the metrics that we've released. And you can see across the bottom are the different mm -hmm. groups. So we have a working group for evolution, for risk, for value, and you happen to be in the value session right now. Um, each one of the green rows are released metrics. Yellow are uh, just like it says, it's in progress, and red are things that have kind of come up that we've heard about, say, at like at OSPOCon or somebody shows up and we're just trying to track things we've heard. So we're not necessarily always working on all of these metrics. Um, yeah. So what I've, what we're finding, and maybe this is for Sean and Elizabeth, like it's a little bit easier right now if we just assign a person to take a look at a metric. So for example, row 27, like labor investment, yeah, I, I would concur. You know what I mean? So we had a heavyweight process around like opening an issue, doing a review, bringing that issue back to the community. Um, it ended up being way too heavyweight for just doing reviews. So we've been kind of modifying the process to improve or kind of speed this up. Exactly. So Matt to review, you can just type Matt to review on the row 28. Oh. Then one below it, yeah. And so if you could scroll down just a little bit to So maybe we could also take a look at some of these. So like maybe Sean, you could opt in for one or Elizabeth. Yeah. We could opt Vinod in for one too. So this is just like kind of making claim to a few of the metrics. And so Elizabeth, the way to review it right now is just create a new um, Google Doc and just copy that the markdown from the GitHub release, that column F right there, and just make any modifications in that Google Doc and track your changes. You know what I mean? So like if a sentence needs to be reworded or something like that, um, I can also, Sean, do you, do you see any that, that you have yeah. a keen interest yeah, in? Yeah, I, I do. Let me, let me do something. Let me pick one. And honestly, sometimes I have, I have to open the tracking spreadsheet because I was, I was watching it on the zoom, but I hadn't opened it myself. Sometimes the review can take as little as five or 10 minutes, to be honest with you. Oh, 
okay. And then we can give Vinod. Okay, let's give Vinod this last one. Okay. All right. Um, that'll at least help. Yeah, it'll push, push us yeah. forward. Yeah, and maybe could we hopefully get those at least the first pass done um, in the next two weeks? I don't know what your all your schedules are. Yeah, two weeks is good. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks for that. Um, well, maybe we could go to the next point, which is um, open issues and PRs. I don't know that we have a lot right now. I think they're mostly idea holders. Do we want to move these to the spreadsheet? I forget what we, I know we talked about this a lot, where if the new ideas belong here or if they belong on the spreadsheet or both. Think, both. Yeah, we've, I think it's a little inconsistent between working groups right now. Um, okay. Because DEI is pretty solid. That There's like a template and everything, but I don't, is that here? I don't know if that's here. Doesn't DEI, oh, like the, New idea template, yeah. Yeah. Um, it should be there. Try to open an issue. It is. Yay. OK. Yeah. So we will keep some here. Do we want to talk about any of these older ideas? I don't know. I mean, I hadn't really thought about these coming in. So we could look at one of them, perhaps. Well, since um, Tony's here, let's look here. Since we're talking about open source. Oh, this open one's office. okay. Okay, looks like just a conversation was happening. Resources, books. <coughs> Tony, this might be an interesting thread for you to read through. It looks like there's a lot of reading yeah, that'd be great. And like I actually saw in a couple of the other issues, like ideas, um, they're, they're they're definitely relevant to us at Rapid Silicon. They were relevant when I was at Xilinx too. Of when, like the project as a whole isn't our product, but it is a small component of a bigger commercial project that is of keen val um, interest to us, right? So I see this one metrics for commercializing open source. That's of key um, interest to us because like as we focus on different projects, because like, this is one of the things like in the commercial world, at least in, in like the world that I live in, there's a lot of confusion about the difference between an open source project and the product that we produce and, and showing in a metrics based way that relationship. And so like in our key value product at Rapid Silicon, I think there's half a dozen different open source products, projects that go together to make a complete tool chain. They all have different levels of maturity and, but also impact on the overall health of the product. And so metrics that um, would show like our biggest pain is in this particular open source project. So we should probably spend more developer time working on that one versus like it's I know I'm not trying to give you guys new metrics. I'm just trying to give a worldview that we have of like yep. how to wrap our head around all of this and how specifically me, because I have to take this data, figure out how to harvest it and then figure out how to sanitize it for an executive staff meeting. That makes sense. Um, one of the so I'm trying to there are a few things. One is you should probably take a look at, did you click on the tracking spreadsheet? Um, which one? I can, I'm kind of, Yeah, this one, I have that one open, yes. Okay, because this could be just from a really broad perspective, something that would be interesting to look at just across mm -hmm. the tabs across the bottom. So you talked about maturity, for example, the evolution tab. We, that actually, <laughs> Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Matt was explaining the, evol the evolution tab has uh, evolution metrics, which are your classic um, activity metrics that open source projects have monitored forever, commits, pull requests, issues, that kind of thing. 
and each of the other working groups have metrics that will apply, I think, broadly in the ASPO world, but mm-hmm. are developed within these focus groups based right, on okay. the interests of the people. So one of the things we're doing right now is recalibrating our website to include keywords that decouple the metrics from the working group that create them because oftentimes ospos will use uh, a buffet Mm -hmm. of metrics across working groups and they can be more difficult to find if if um they can be more difficult to find uh, organized by working group because then you have to guess which working group might have created it right okay Um, but uh, as Matt was explaining, that spreadsheet, the bottom tab of it, makes it pretty easy. Um, yeah, and take a look yeah, as I go through these tabs, unfortunately, a lot of the ones that I think are are related to things I've actually heard from our executive staff interested in are like in the considering uh, status or, or anything can, like that. We can move those forward. So typically, yeah. the, to move it from considering to like in progress, and then back mm-hmm. to released, it it just takes an owner. Okay. You know what I mean? And then we work on the metric as a group, but we kind of okay. need somebody to shepherd the metric. You know what right. I mean? Like just kind of carry it forward. Okay. What we're looking for. So if there's any that you have an interest in, then the other thing is, and take a look at risk tab too. So Tony, I'd recommend that you just take a look at this. Yeah, this is too. definitely like, I see a lot of value in this. And I just, I mean, honestly, I'm, drinking from the fire hose right now. Of it like, is. This is, is a lot. And so it's yeah. overwhelming, but also it's overwhelming in a good way because <laughs> a lot of the th- stuff I've already kind of in the back of my head thought that we're going to have to do, it looks like you guys have already considered as a group anyway. And it's just a matter yeah. of finding out my vector of engagement. So then the, the other, the other thing that we do in the chaos project is like any one of these metrics alone may not be um, may not tell a very good story. Right. You know I mean? So like the age of an issue, like, like that's interesting, I suppose, but it may not really give you um, what you need to talk to executive council. Mm-hmm. And so we have a, a group that meets, um, I don't know where you're located, but it meets uh, on- I'm in Colorado, by the way, so. Oh, you are? Okay. Hey, I went, I, <laughs> I have a lot of family in Colorado. I went to Fort Collins and I, went to Boulder. So oh, nice. And lived in Longmont. And oh, anyway, um, and I, I'm in Colorado right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's why you have the great I just like Colorado. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. 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 Usually, usually I'm in Missouri, but, but, uh, my family reunions in Colorado. So, so the other thing that if you click, yeah, you did Elizabeth like metrics model. So basically what the, the tab on the farthest right is, is this is a group that meets every other week um, and it's a pretty active group and we've had folks from ospos as well that are basically saying what are the collections of metrics that we need ah uh, good okay to tell a story about like look at if you look at row 27 like what is the responsiveness of right a community and responsiveness is a yeah you can click on that google doc Yeah, for right now, and I don't know if there are specific, again, you can just answer this informally because I'm going to go deep dive on all of this, but me reading through this, sitting through OspoCon, it seemed like um, a lot of the metrics were about like developer relationships working directly in upstream and, and, and in that part of the community. But like for us, a lot of the way we integrate different projects is we fork them, we bring them in house, and then we push upstream periodically. And so um, a key main goal that I have right now is more of an inner source kind of worldview of like trying to build like open source habits just inside the company. And and I don't know if these same metrics get applied just on our internal repos in that way, because like, I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm trying not to rat hole too much, but I have a, a particular worldview that I'm trying to describe. That I'm. Tr- I don't know if there are metrics necessarily to help with those. Um. Pro- probably yes, and it's about how we would package them to tell the okay. story that that you would need to tell. You know what okay. I mean? So it's about looking across common DEI evolution, risk, and value. It's like what are the collections of metrics that we could take a look at that in your case like. 
it sounded like you were trying to to get people to work in the upstream as opposed to just well i know it's it's not necessarily that it's i think treat our internal repo <coughs> as an upstream temporarily okay right? right so that's part of it but then also have metrics of how often are we upstreaming are we upstreaming yeah. appropriately those kinds of things yeah i mean that yeah there's that's... go ahead sean yeah there's some there's definitely some risk metrics that have been deployed recently related to dependencies that i think okay would, that'd be great be I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that sean and we we have um we have those we have a number of dependency metrics available in augur right okay. now as well where we look at um, one metric that you've probably heard of is Libier. Mm -hmm. And we look, you know, we just show you what is, what's the average age of the imports that you have and where are the places that you should be making upstream contributions. Some of the ASPOs that we've worked directly with, really, they want to understand where they're, where they should invest money in the upstream. Yep. So they have a finite amount of funds. And they want to have some understanding of where their greatest risk is. Like, where do we have something, for example, that is so embedded in our core open source product that we need it to be maintained and it doesn't look like it's being maintained enough. So we should assign someone to work or contribute to that project. Um, okay. And where, and then there are other OSPOs who are looking to try to control more completely the dependencies that they, that are created within their product. Yeah, and that's so, like exactly, okay. Uh, these, so I'll, and I'll those go deep dive on these. Yeah. So and the, and the awareness, um, if you've got some repos, you could uh, message them to me in Slack, and sure. I could I could set you up an Augur instance to so you just get a sense of what you would see. Okay, I'll message you on Slack. <clears throat> we're, I'm actually one of the things that we're doing right now because we're still a startup. We're actually pivoting out of stealth mode and into more public mode. So we're in the flight of moving our repos from being private to in, into public repos. Right. So sure. not all of them. I guess that's a good question. Does Augur work against private repos? Yeah, as long as you're, um, you you just have to provide an API token, if okay. it's GitHub or GitLab, um, that has access to those repos. So, for example, I would assume your mm -hmm. uh, uh, no auth token from your GitHub user is going to have access to those private yep. repos, and so Augur will have no idea that they are private. Okay, um, cool. Uh, and then there's a little bit of command line foo. That you you would need to use to um, basically you have to cache your GitHub credential in order to clone the private repos for the commit counting part of it. Okay. So it's just it's a Git setting. It's 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 in our you know. <laughs> that sounds like a getting docs. started kind of thing. So I can take a look at that and then message yeah. you if I have questions. Yeah, I mean, I'll say there are, there are instructions in the docs, but I think it's a little disingenuous. It's like a professor saying it's in the syllabus, but the syllabus <laughs> is the syllabus is fifteen pages long, and it's on page fourteen. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. Could you go back to the issues, Elizabeth? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, can I close this since it's just kind of a list of resources? So. Yes. Okay. I was thinking the same thing. All right, boom. Okay, and I'm wondering too, remember in our discussion yesterday in DEI, like labor investment right now? That time. <laughs> what about labor development? Can you open it? Remember how we were going to close some of these bulky issues? Yes. And just put any changes in the um, in the Google Doc. And so we could probably close this just as following the new <laughs> the new approach to revising metrics. Right here. The new light blue. Yes. <laughs> right, exactly. So I think that takes care of that nicely. Um, and then these look like they're, uh, this yeah. doesn't belong here. It's a metrics model.
this has been Yep. And that I was so productive. Three. Good job. You're welcome, Manon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, so we, so have, we have. How about 108? Burstiness. 108. Oh, business oh. readiness. This is. I think Manon is really kind of passionate about this, but this also, I think, was a, a oh. metric swap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you? Uh, I'm, how about we just say something like? Um, Why don't we? Yeah, I was gonna say ping Vinod and say, can you move this <clears> to <throat> metrics models, or capture this conversation? You know what I mean? And yeah, bring it yeah. to the metrics model group. Yeah. Because I think it's it's valid. I just think nobody's really had the time to pursue it. No, and I was looking like if Vinod is passionate about it, and it looked like Dwayne had commented from India yeah. as well, yeah. and Roberg, who's at Google, and so there's like interest in such a thing. Yeah, and there's some good comments here. Some yeah, good content. So we need to, but I hate yeah, to this lot. one seems really actually specifically interesting to me. So I'll read through this. Okay. Here's the issue. Yeah. Let me pick it here for you. And I'm wondering, do we? I'm gonna open up the. Do we? What is this one? Business readiness rating. Yeah. yeah. So um, another thing we had talked about in other working groups is if there is a metrics model that comes up in a working group, that yeah. the working group can start it and then hand it off. If you know what I mean. So if mm -hmm. not. It's passionate and Tony, if you want to also jump in and you know, just look, we could just start like flushing this out a little bit more. Um, that's certainly something that can be done, I think. I mean, we, were, is... we were afraid that we were going to like dump everything on the metrics models and say, here you go, <laughs> here's, a, here's a model we want. Absolutely. So we'll this is, I'll take a look, I'll prioritize taking a look at this one because actually this is writing down <clears throat> in a much more succinct way what I was trying to describe earlier, right? Which is where we have multiple components and and different and I, the word readiness is actually what I was searching for in my head, right? Of like this component is really robust. It's got a lot of documentation. It's feature complete. We don't need to touch that. But this other component that's core to our business, like maybe it works, but the docs aren't there. And so we're gonna have as an organization, we're gonna have to take on writing docs for it or whatever, like mm -hmm. all of that. Um, because that has that scales to some of the what technical support do we have to own as an organization versus yeah. what can we defer yeah. our users to the community for? Well, let's so, yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that one. Maybe that's a good starting place uh, for my involvement be. in the group. Welcome to value. Now you have an action item. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> well, that, that's exactly why I'm here, right? <laughs> and I'll grab the put it in the minutes as well, the template to the model. Perfect. Uh okay. and, uh keep it oh yeah. What? I was gonna ask Elizabeth to put the link to the issue in there, but I think that she was about to do that, so I shut up. Oh I put it as a comment. Why did I do that? That was I how does Google Docs even work? I don't know. It's complicated. <laughs> it is. It started to warn me when something is outside my Google organization, too. It's doing all these new bells and whistles. Should we move <coughs> to in progress now or not yet? Um, it can be. Let's, is it even in here? Find it. I don't know. Maybe it's not even in here. It might not even be in here. I don't see it. Where would it go? Um, what's the top one? What's the Social top value. one? No, societal, not. It's either yeah. organization, probably organizational value or communal value, kind of like wherever, mm -hmm. wherever you're yeah. standing. It's probably. Probably organizational oh, value. Would it, it would fit over here somewhere, not. It in, would. Right. 
Yeah, the, uh, we're, oh. we're redoing the focus area names here. So. Oh, okay. So never mind. We will we'll figure that out later. That's fine. We'll figure that out later. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. Make a quick note here. Um, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Um, and then, so I think the other issue, okay, so this is a kind of a larger issue, and it's interesting, again, that, that Tony's here. So the value working group has um, had several different forms over the, over the last few years. <laughs> several put, different purposes, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really think that <coughs> as we, so there are kind of like a few things going on here. One is that we're kind of exploring that partnership with the to-do group, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And so there's that affiliates program with the to-do group that we're talking, I, I need to talk to Anna a little bit more about that. Um, Anna kind of is the community manager for right. the I, I met her at Austin. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Um, I've, I've, I've been in uh, several planned conversations with Anna and Don Foster, who's also pretty okay. active in chaos, about the to-do group's um, new outreach work that they're doing, essentially their monthly meetings, and then uh, we're planning a face-to-face -face meeting in Stockholm for um, the European community in October. I think it's the 19th to the 21st. Well, I think there's where, a, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so so Anna's pretty looped in to chaos right now and we agreed to join the affiliates for the associates program. With the well, there's a conversation so. going on yeah, on the board email list. Oh. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I haven't, uh, haven't processed email in the last 24 hours, so I haven't. So it's just, it's mostly, it, it's a lot about what the relationship of the affiliates program means, you know what I mean? And what resource sharing looks like. And so I think we just need to, to sort that out. Um, but the point, irrespective, I guess, of the affiliates program, like my own personal take is we have working groups that are focused on, say, for example, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have working groups that are focused on, on risk. I would really like to have value focus on, on OSPOs, particularly. That would, I would like that to be, this is my own personal, like I would, I would really like that to be a focus of this group and what are the metrics that OSPOs do care about yeah. from a value perspective. And I, I will say that the, up to this point, the risk working group has had the most OSPO stuff coming through it so far, but it's been entirely focused on risk, right? So value is the positive side of the coin. And I think a, a very critical part of it. Uh -huh. So I, yeah, and we also have um, Stephen, who's not on the call right now. Stephen Jacobs is at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and he is also on the to-do group, um, but he's also part of an effort called OSPO++. And OSPO++ is OSPOs within universities. So it's like the tech transfer stuff. So how do, okay. how do companies, or how, sorry, how do universities think about open source as part of their like tenure and promotion process? And like, how do they ascribe value to, to creating communities and creating healthy communities? So I think between the to-do group and OSPO++, I'd like to, to really kind of reimagine the value working group around um, value derived metrics that are critical for OSPOs, mm -hmm. whether they're uh, corporate or un university. I mean, the, the conversation, you know, could, could kind of be split. I think the outputs are going to be different. <laughs> what a university looks at is naturally different um, than what, than what a company looks at, but nonetheless, I think we can still kind of take a look at value from that perspective. So I don't know what other people's thoughts are on that. Sean, you had kind of mentioned that risk is doing this, but there might be value in doing this here as well. Yeah, and I, th I think, yeah, I mean, I think there's use. I'm just saying that 
metrics that have been developed where OSPO leaders have been like driving them. That's kind of what the risk working group has been doing, but it's been it's been focused on risk, right? And there is, uh, I think, a value lens through which OSPO work needs to also be viewed, and that yeah. this would be a good focus for the value working group as well. Okay. I, I agree with that. So one of the key tent poles of how we're trying to use, or at least how I as an OSPO within our company is trying to present open source is that it's a um, basically own what you care about kind of model where if it's something that we just want to take off the shelf an open source project, that's fine. Um, but then the value part of it is proving through metrics that those things are satisfying our needs, like as is, and that it would help hopefully help also surface where there's something we care about that's not, and I think this goes to this business readiness metric that I'll help work on of like where we care about something that's not satisfying our needs so that we can focus on it. So it's kind of a blending of risk, which we, we use the word gaps, right? Like feature gaps, but risk and value kind of blend together there to help us hone in on what we care about. All right, cool. So that's, what do you think, Elizabeth? I'm curious where you're at on this. Yeah, I think it makes sense, especially if we can rehome the so social yes. value, societal yeah. value, like that, that piece I don't want to ever get lost, but that's the hard, like, those are hard questions to answer, you know, how you measure that stuff. So that's why I don't think we've really made a lot of progress on that. Cause it's no, just No, I hard. feel like they've kind of been just like, we thought of them maybe yeah. like two years ago or a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, kind of sat and, idle here. Right, right, because they're harder. So, um, but I think that the DEI right, working sure. group would be a great place for it. Um, I agree. And I, agree. I don't. We might even consider renaming this working group to OSPO working group or something like that. Would just be obvious. So, if you're in an OSPO and you want to talk about stuff that's valuable, come here. Yeah. As just a suggestion or an idea, happy to keep it as value also because it is talking about value things. Yeah. Um, but. And then use maybe use value as like the keyword or the um, you know the category whatever what are we calling those not categories uh, context tag context tag yes tagging tagging our so. metrics well let me how about this before we rename it let me try to go through like the readme I'll take an action item of just going through the readme and trying to rewrite it you know what I mean what the mission would be. that is a little bit more honed in. And we might end up doing, Sean, something similar for risk that just kind of sends a signal that the risk working group is a lot about OSPOs as well. Without renaming it, you're muted if you were gonna. Yeah, yeah, if um, if there's some kind of signal about uh, OSPO interest, I think both risk and value would be good yeah. places for folks to start. Okay. <clears throat> um, because my only my only hesitation, I thought I actually it's funny because I had suggested renaming it OSPO two to Sean. Well, <laughs> and Sean was like, I, I don't mean to like say you said no, Sean, but you were like, well, <laughs> risk risk also does OSPO stuff, so we don't want to just like have this one be OSPO and risk is not OSPO. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, it, it would confuse the people that have built those metrics. I think. So I had thought that as well. Actually, I had at a, at a larger scale, I'm like, really when it comes down to thinking about kind of the work that chaos does, it's a lot about OSPO work, just straight up. And it's a lot about uh, DEI work. And it's not saying the two are inseparable from one another, but those seem to be um, really core, core pillars of the chaos project. So, so I'm with you though, Elizabeth on, um, if you can, I don't know if you're done typing, but like go back to the metric spreadsheet. Yeah. Like just moving that top group of societal value. Yeah. Just yep, yeah, moving that entire. You want me to do it? Yeah, just let's just move that block over to DEI. Or no, we should, should we say moving? We could. I mean, I, I've been getting rid of some of the moved tags after a okay. while. I mean, we could. Okay. Let's cool. just move it. Yeah, let's just move it. 
<laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna just put it down here under recognition of good work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let me make sure. Paste. Yeah. Paste, which like everything, will it paste, will it paste properly? I think it'll paste properly if you okay. did okay. it. Oh, it lost the, oh, I can fix that. It lost the color coding. <coughs> Try, make it, yeah. I'll do this you know what I mean? Let's all watch Elizabeth screw with Excel. <laughs> okay. There we go. Did, I, no, you just, did like, you just like click the color? No, I clicked this paste. Oh, so okay. Oh, so you took the format. formatting. Yeah, I did. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> this looks weird. This didn't, should be we'll left. Make it, yeah, left. Okay. Okay. okay right yes. on. Okay, so that moves societal value. And then if we go back to the value. Let's like. Here get rid of all those yeah. yay okay yeah. so then we have this is i like this a lot better because then it's value that an organization cares about it's value that a person cares about which i do think there's there's a lot to be said there so particularly this is like an individual who takes on maintainership roles and the value that they can accrue as maintainers or leaders in projects to be mobile could we move this over to dei also no, I think it's good here. I, I like it. Okay. We're talking about salary and equity and things like that too. Yeah. Earning potential and I think the value like at least I the value that I think is the value the value that a person can accrue. Yes, I, I agree with that. And I like those metrics that are there because I've actually already been working with our HR group to try and take <laughs> some of those metrics and turn them into recruiting tools. Yeah, it's a lot about it's like job stuff. But maybe some of the ones that you're talking about, Elizabeth, maybe they we might want to rethink those. You know what I mean? We like we're, his, like yeah. if I look at effort to get started or average salary or you know, earning potential, like those things to me are more of like newcomers, equity, like is this a good thing? Is it is it equal? You know, is it I don't know. Can you put it or maybe we can just do it, the context tags again to link the two? That could be. Yep. Right, that we don't worry about moving it, but it's still an individual ascribed value concern. And then communal value. I think there's a lot here as well, which I like keeping, which is, um, I think a lot of this is about, like, honestly, the number of corporations, perhaps, that participate in your project, um, the number of people that, I don't know, if, like popularity, that's a candidate for a metrics model, but like the number of people that download, fork, and star your project. <coughs> these are things that you care about from a community um, to build value. And then the last one was academic value, which is the OSPO++ stuff, the, the university OSPOs. <coughs> so I like this a lot better. Like Vinod doesn't run a meeting and we <laughs> We change everything. We're gonna go back yeah. like, what the heck? Change the name of the working group. We got rid of focus areas. That was our chance Sorry. to restructure stuff. <laughs> I'll just say Vinod, we we highly recommend you watch the recording. <laughs> just in case, you yeah. know. Um okay. Yeah, so I think that's good. We have, we have two minutes left, right? Three, yeah, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes left, so. Anything else we want to talk about? No, I'm I'm good. No, I just want to say thank you everyone for um, being so welcoming and so uh, tolerant and patient with my questions. I know I'm a newcomer and uh, definitely still a baby in this area, so I'm trying to learn and trusting me enough to take on an AI. Yeah, we are thrilled to have you here, Tony. Absolutely. Yeah. Tony, you're in Slack, right? You found our Slack. I, I do have the Slack. Um, I need to be more active on it, but um, this, I have it on my calendar because I, I got the, the calendar invite forwarded to me, but it's every two weeks, right? In this time slot. <laughs> yep. yep. Yes, exactly. And there's only one. Right. It's like, there's not like some of the different uh, working groups have like Europe 
time, Europe and North America time, and an Asia Pac time. This one's only one. In terms of when it like occurs. when like the, some of the working groups will split their meeting between two different times for different geographies. I oh yeah, seen this, that. this is always here. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. other the other working group that you if if you have time is the risk working group. It's okay. a pretty active group as well. And Sean, when do you meet for that one? Um, well, we're scheduled to meet today at uh, 1 p.m. U.S. Central Time, but I have a conflict, and David, a couple of other people who are regulars have COVID after OSSNA. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking of actually canceling that meeting. I'm checking with Sophia to see if she can facilitate okay. in my absence. But I think I with, won't be able without, to make that one today, but I'll, I'll try and uh, attend that one in the future, Sean. Yeah, that, I, I think it probably won't occur today just because without. Sophia, basically, there's the four core people uh, are probably all out today. <laughs> okay. So, um, but I'd recommend that one as well, Tony. Okay. Well, I'll definitely look into that one. Okay. okay. Cool. Right. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. everyone. I'll, yeah. I guess I'll see you next time. Yeah. 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 See you next time. Nice to meet you, Tony. Bye, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. Bye, Tony. Bye.